we'll have a ceremony. I'm dead serious. I know this sounds funny, but no man in here is laughing. <laughs> and we're going to cut off the skin. And then you'll be in our club. And you'll be holy. And by the way, the more skin we cut off, the more holy you are. Do you hear me? That's the mutilation. This is still true today. You meet these standards and you get your little pamphlet checked in the boxes when you meet all the goals. When you jump through these hoops and you get your happy star face, now you can graduate to the next level of whatever. Let's, let's cut some more skin off. This is horrifically graphic and it's supposed to be. If somebody comes along to you and says, listen, how are you going to get to heaven? Think of this. Jack, how are you going to get to heaven? Watch. Are you guys listening? If I were to die today and I, and I stood there and Peter came walking, I don't know why we talk about this, but Peter, <laughs> Peter comes out and says, hey, how are you? Great. Who are you? I'm Jack. Never heard of you. I'm the pastor at Calvary Chapel. Never heard of it. Um, listen. I believe in God. Uh, a lot of people do. None of those answers will work. Uh, I, could, I could say, I raised people from the dead. You could say that. The, Jesus said in Matthew 7, people are going to say that. Did you know that? Matthew 7, beginning at verse 20. Uh, I cast out demons. Peter's going to go, what, uh, okay, whatever. Anyway, what, so what? That's not how you get into this place. Do you know what the answer is? I'm a sinner saved by Jesus Christ on the cross, died for my sins. And Peter might say, do you, you want to add anything to that? No. All right. Dude, come on in. Ha <laughs> ha! Did you hear that? You put your faith in Jesus and what he did, and the Holy Spirit circumcises our hearts. Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29 tells us that he is not a Jew. The word Jew, Jew Judah, Jew, Judy, it means to worship God. Paul says, look, Paul's a Jew in the flesh, right? Talking to a bunch of Italians in Rome. In the book of Romans. And he says, he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, whose circumcision is of the flesh, but he is a true Jew whose circumcision is of the heart, not of man's hands, but by the Spirit of God. Did you hear that? I pray this morning that's setting someone free in here. Pastor, are you saying that all of my hard works to impress God to get me into heaven is trash. Yes. That doesn't get you into heaven. But if you say, I have trusted Jesus Christ with my soul based upon his sacrifice at the cross for me, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I bring nothing to add to his work for nothing can be added to his work. And whatever happens or whatever you bring to the table of appreciation or acts of thanks is besides the point of salvation. Fruit should be in our lives. But ladies and gentlemen, the thief on the cross immediately went into the presence of the Lord and he had no works. He believed in Christ. People can still be converted and received into glory on their deathbeds. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation who are part of this grand spiritual attack to breed false doctrine among your life and your heart to get you ever so slightly off course that over time you'll miss heaven altogether because you'll forsake doctrine and go after aberrant doctrine. You know what? In fact, guess what? The unforgivable sin. Does anybody know what it is? The Bible says Jesus Christ died for all sins. All sins. 
But there's one sin that is unforgivable. And I'm wondering if you know. I'll give you a hint. Well, I'll give you, first of all, before I give you the hint, it's not murder, it's not adultery, it's not fornication, it's not homosexuality, it's not robbery, it's not abortion, it's not, it's not suicide. It's the doctrine of the Pharisees that Jesus said was this, that what Jesus did in his life and ministry and the fact, who, this is getting deep now. Who rose Jesus from the dead? Peggy, what was it? Yes. The Bible says the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Are you with me? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is the unforgivable sin. What is that? It's, listen, it's not to believe the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, which is what? Who's the author of the Bible? The Holy Spirit. Isn't it interesting? To believe in aberrant doctrine is to sin against the Holy Spirit, which Jesus said will not be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, why, why, why? Because it's the doctrine that you're holding on to that's wrong. You're following cult thinking or cult doctrines. Doctrines like that knock on your door. Jesus is not the Son of God like you Christians say he's Gabriel, the angel. Or he's the Son of God, I'm the Son of God, you're the Son of God. Oh, we all get to be the Son of God. False doctrine. Do you hear this? You say, Pastor, the church is not going to grow if you keep talking like this. I don't care. This is true. And there's a spiritual war to undermine the Bible. They will not succeed. God's word will never return void. But there's a lot going on in the name of church under a cross in the name of Jesus that has nothing to do with the Bible. Galatians chapter 5 verse 11 says, And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, if I'm still preaching legalism and self-performance, why do I still suffer persecution? Why are these legalists attacking me? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. And every time Paul opened up his mouth, he talked about the cross, and that's what got him in trouble. Verse 12, Galatians 5, 12. I could wish that those who trouble you would even, what? Cut themselves off. Oh my gosh, this is church. Isn't this awesome? Can you believe we're talking about this in church? This is Bible. Paul says, look. Paul says, they think that the more skin they cut off, the more holy they are? Well then, if that's what they believe, then have them cut the whole thing off. <laughs> that's what he, is that awesome? He's my kind of pastor, this guy. <laughs> oh, so you want to be legalistic, huh? I had somebody tell me, they rebuked me. It's amazing. They were at, in my house eating my food and they said, I, it's, it's unbelievable. They said, you know, you and Lisa, you're so nice. It's very sad. It's very sad for us that you actually, by worshiping God on Sundays, you act, you're actually serving Satan in my house with my food in their mouth. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I said, what? Oh, no, you, you you should do your services on Saturday. I said, are you, are you a Jew? Are you Jewish? No. I said, what are you talking about? Saturday's the day that we're supposed to. I said, are you basing that on what? The Ten Commandments. Oh. But you're not Jewish, but you, you, you worship God on Saturday. Now, look, I've read my Bible the Bible, Paul the Apostle says, the Bible says in other places, some men esteem one day important and some men esteem another day important. Paul says, I esteem every day the same. What does that mean? Every day is the day to worship God. Okay, look, and what's funny, this church, when we didn't have such a big sanctuary, we used to have to have services on Saturday night. So I guess those were the real services and the fake ones were on Sunday morning. Well, what if we have a service on Monday night? Uh, only Satan will come. 
Do you see the stupidity of this? But legalists get all bent out of shape. The amazing thing was, he didn't keep the other Ten Commandments. And I asked him. So the Ten Commandments, I've always been viewed as the Ten Commandments, like a link, ten links in a chain. So you're keeping this one. But what if, what if you're breaking the third one? The third one falls, breaks the chain as much as the tenth or the first one. Which link are you hanging on to? Which link are you going to die on and say, well, this is, I'm, I do this one. Then, okay, then do the nine also. It's impossible. That's what the Ten Commandments are for. To show us that we are unholy and only he is holy. That's why, look, God gives the Ten Commandments to the Jewish nation and turns right around and says to them, oh, by the way, here's the Ten Commandments and uh, you're going to need an animal sacrifice for the day you break them. Did you hear that legalist? So Paul says, well, you know, you want to, you know, don't get, just don't bring out a little toenail clipper and, and trim yourself there. <laughs> just get it out there and get an ax and get real holy if you want to talk about it. I know that's graphic, and that's exactly what he's saying. Don't write me a letter because I'm right. Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> And listen, the next thing is this. We are not in this for ourselves. The more you serve Jesus, the more I'm aware of this. We're not in this for ourselves. Are, are you crazy? You know what? I tell you what. When I'm in it for myself, I'll tell you right now. If I'm in it for myself right now, what time is it? Oh, it's still time. Yep. I could, listen, I could make it. I could make it to LAX on a Sunday morning under an hour. Why? Because if I'm in this for myself... I could be in Maui by 1 o'clock today. I could be on the beach. I could be surfing today by 3 o'clock in the Hawaiian Islands. If I'm in it for me, that's what I'm going to do. But if I'm not in it for me, and if you're not in it for you, you're going to be doing what Jesus tells you to do. And you are going to delight in that thing. Think of it. Christian, we're not in this for ourselves. What a beautiful thing. Look what he says. I beg you that when I am absent, I may not be bold. With that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some. I don't want to come to you, Corinthians, and read some letter I've written, some strong word that's been stated. I want to come to you in love. I want to come to you in tenderness. But here's what he's saying. But listen, I will trouble those. I will be confident and strong against those who attack doctrine, Bible doctrine. He's not defending himself. He's defending the gospel. Listen, my dear friends, dear Christians, don't defend yourself. It's impossible, especially in this internet age. People can make pictures of you. They can make things. They can artwork stuff. They can make statements. They can, listen, I, there have been people who have taken our messages on audio and have tampered with them to make them say something that we don't believe. You can do that in this age. It's a dangerous age. You can't defend yourself. It's impossible. But I know one who can defend us. Don't spend your time ch chasing yourself in circles trying to well, she said, he said in that blog, that blog told me, that, and I read that blog, and hello, wake up, don't read the blog. What does blog mean? Anybody know what blog means? Don't read them. Uh, it's got to stand for something. <laughs> Big lies of gossip. Stuff like that. Big lies of gossip. But God will defend you. Paul has committed his trust to God. God will defend him. God will defend you. Church, we're going into rough waters. There's icebergs out there, spiritually speaking. There's wars brewing, spiritually. Families under attack, need I remind you. Marriage under attack. Education under attack, culture under attack, your freedom's under attack. What is driving this stuff? Spiritual powers behind them that manifest them in the idiocy and lunacy of people who are open to the workings of the enemy, and they don't even know it. 
We're not in this for ourselves. We'd go lay on the beach if it was for ourselves. We're in the fight. We're Christians. And it's all important. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Great verse of the Bible. Galatians 2, 20. Are you guys okay? Yes. You're very quiet. Did I scare you with the introduction saying that something was coming? <laughs> it's still coming, you know. Oh, what I've said so far is nothing. Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. Comfortable or bloody? Easy or hard? Well, it's hard to believe because we know who we are. We know what we are. It's costly because Jesus did it. But it's free. But it's not cheap. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, go see the movie, who loved me and gave himself for me. (laughs) Look at that freedom. Look at that. Look at that liberty. Oh my goodness. Now I see why, and now I see how I get in the battle. I've been crucified with Christ. Translation, bang, bang, you're dead. The Christian's dead. God says, the day Jesus died on the cross, all those who have ever believed in my coming and all those who look back at my coming 2,000 years back, the day Jesus died as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, Jack died too. God says, Jack, the moment you trusted in me on June 20th, 1977, you tapped into a work that I did 2,000 years ago at the cross just like Abraham did who looked 2,000 years ahead to the cross. Abraham got saved the same way Jack got saved. We looked to the sacrificial lamb. That's what Abraham was living out on Mount Moriah in Genesis. That's what Abraham said. Isaac, you can calm down. The Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. Oh, man. The moment I said yes to Jesus, Jesus said, all right, welcome home. Well, Lord, I've never been here before. I've just been waiting for you to arrive. My son died for you 2,000 years ago. Oh, and and by the way, Jack, I want you to be strong, because you can be. Not in your own strength. It's not your power. I want you to understand something. In coming to me, the power of your old nature died. You'll still struggle with it, and you'll have to deal with it, but it it has no power to win anymore. Look, people, sin that grabs you and pulls you around by the snout. You ever seen a bull with the ring in the nose? It's an amazing animal, massive, tear you apart. And the little girl can go up there and tug in that ring, and that bull, that hurts, man. Go stick a needle between your nose like that and see what happens. It's been controlled. God says, listen, the power of my resurrected son through the power of the Holy Spirit is now the governor of your new life. You've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live, but the life that you now live, you live by faith in the power of God. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Philippians 3, 7. says, but what things were gained to me, these I've counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I suffer the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, listen, not having my own righteousness. This is completely opposite from the Judaizers and from those that were troubling him at Corinth, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. That's life. That's victory. That's Christianity. That's real. The third thing under this point is this. Our special weapons and tactics are not predicated upon us. We are not under our own authority. We are not under our own authority. He says right there, There are those who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh or fleshly, fleshy, carnal. The word walked right here is this word. It means to tread about, 
It means to walk at large, to transport yourself, or to be preoccupied with yourself. Paul is saying, listen, we don't listen. Christian, we do not do what we do as Christians on our own authority. This is liberating, Christian. This sets us free. It's not up to us. It's not our own power. It's not our authority. How can you be bold as a Christian? How is Paul bold? He didn't invent this stuff. It was God. I tell you, before I die, I would love to impart to you several things. One of them would be that you would so see your identity in Jesus that though our outward man's perishing, your inward man's being renewed day by day, says the Bible, that you actually see yourself galvanized and, and invincible until the day Jesus calls you home. You can't stop a Christian like that. They tried to stop Paul. Remember, we've said this before. Paul, we're going to kill you. To die, to live as Christ, to die as gain. Go ahead. What? Wait, wait. You like that idea that we're going to kill you? Well, then we're going to let you live. To live as Christ. Well, doggone it, then we're going to kill you. To die is gain. What are we going to do with this guy? That's the Christian life. We're going to put you in prison. We're going to shut you up. I'll preach Christ in the prisons. Oh, oh, we don't want that to happen. Uh, then we're, then, you see, you can't stop a Christian like that. Doesn't matter where your feet land. God will always have an audience to you to preach at or to to witness to, even if it's one person. Paul gets imprisoned, and it's one guard every four hours. <laughs> Think of that. They're on a rotation basis. That's how Rome did it. Next. Paul, those Roman guards. <sighs> Time's up. See you, Paul. See you tomorrow. Can you imagine they walked by? They walked by each other. All right, he's going to tell you about the grace of God and the love of Jesus. Oh, my goodness. I got to talk to Caesar. I got to get some of their detail. <laughs> they strapped the next centurion to Paul. Hey, how are you? Oh, that's awesome. Your helmet reminds me of the helmet of salvation. <laughs> that breastplate of righteousness. Wow. Ding, ding, ding. Can you imagine Paul knocking on it? Ding, 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 ding. Wow. You know what it reminds me of? The righteousness of God. The, the Roman guards like this. Oh, brother. I bet you no. I bet you those dudes got saved. You want to know why? Later on, the Bible says, greet all those who are in Rome, especially those in Caesar's household. Oh, man, those Roman guards, they, got, they were going to a crusade. They didn't even know it. <laughs> it's not our authority. We get to say what we say. This is going to sound arrogant. I think I said it last week. Speak Bible. You'll always be right. You, won't, you may not be popular, but you'll always be right. I love it. Is time up? It's time's up. We didn't even get to the stuff yet. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, I ask today that if there's any man or woman, boy or girl here right now, that in some way, shape, or form, God thinks highly of themselves, Something that has convinced them that they don't need to humble themselves, to ask for your forgiveness, to see themselves as lost sinners. That today they might say, Jesus. I have been leaning on some performance of mine. I have leaned on a membership of a denomination or a tithing record or an attendance record. I have been prone to boast or brag about past spiritual exploits to somehow think they are reserved in some trust and I hear this morning that none of that can save me. In this moment of prayer, my friend, if that's you today, I know this is brutally honest. But that's, listen, that's okay because this, 
gives opportunity to the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Notice how he's not yelling at you right now. He's not shouting. He has a very still, gentle voice. It somehow is connected to, I don't know, maybe like an emotional nudge. And he's saying, this is you. This is you. And you need to let my son in. You need to get saved today. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Christians, please be praying right now. But if that's you today, and you'd like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as I look across this sanctuary, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. You've heard the gospel and the message. Jesus died for you. He rose again from the grave for you. You can't get into heaven without him. And oh, by the way, he's not a, mod, he's not a modular add-on. He is it. If today you're accepting Jesus Christ and you understand that and you want to have a new life, raise your hand high so I can see it. I'll just see your hand. God bless you in the back. God bless you up front. Over here to my right, anyone else? Is God speaking to you? God bless you on the aisle to my left. Is God speaking to your heart? Is there a anxiety? Is there like a, a holy tension going on right now? It's amazing because when the gospel goes out, people who are saved are at peace with it and people who are not try to argue or excuse it away. I warn you lovingly by the mercies of God, if there's a struggle going on inside of your heart, that is proof positive the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Do not put him off. Decide on Jesus Christ today. Father, for these who have raised their hands, we pray now as they perhaps wrap these words in their own style or their own format, but they come today believing, Jesus, you died on the cross. They speak forth to you today, thanks that you've risen from the dead, that you are the eternal God, that your Bible announces your coming, your being, and your coming again. And we, together with these new believers, put our trust in you. And gently, with meekness and the gentleness of Christ, I pray that those, Lord, who are in the balance, may they not rest tonight, may they not be able to sleep tonight until they surrender to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, we praise you, God, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.